So what was the preclinical work that led to the Alcanza study, which is a randomized study of brentuximab vidotin uh, versus uh, standard treatments for cutaneous T-cell lymphoma, such as bexarotene or methotrexate? So CD30 is a marker that's on the tumor cells of many people with uh, cutaneous T-cell lymphoma, particularly mycosis fungoides. And brentuximab vidotin is what's called an antibody drug conjugate. So that's an antibody or a protein that targets a feature usually on a cell surface, in this case targeting CD30. And then in, in this situation, rather than just activating the immune system, which is what we would call a cold or a naked antibody would do, uh, the antibody is, um, is linked to a molecule of chemotherapy, in this case, a drug called orostatin. And in that sense, you can deliver a little bit of chemotherapy to specific cells of interest. And in this case, it's the tumor cells that express CD30. So brentuximab vidotin was initially developed for universally CD30 expressing lymphomas. And those are mostly uh, what we call Hodgkin lymphoma or uh, anaplastic large cell lymphoma. And early development went on showing that the drug was quite effective in those diseases. In looking to extend uh, the uses or trying to find other areas where brentuximab might be effective, uh, investigators looked at different types of lymphoma and really different cancers that would express CD30. And it turns out that other types of T-cell lymphoma, including cutaneous T-cell lymphoma, the tumor cells often express CD30, sometimes to a lower degree than Hodgkin lymphoma or anaplastic large cell lymphoma, but enough that it made sense to try brentuximab uh, in those diseases. So what had to happen for this trial to occur? Uh, well, initially there needed to be a proof of principle or some early phase studies uh, looking at whether brentuximab was reasonable uh, meaning uh, reasonable response rates, people got better, had disease improvement with cutaneous T-cell lymphoma. And there were early phase studies uh, done at MD Anderson and Stanford uh, looking at both the general activity of brentuximab vidotin in cutaneous T-cell lymphoma, and it looked like many patients uh, had improvement in their disease when they were treated with that. And also trying to look at things like CD30 expression, meaning um, did any CD30 on the cancer cell, was that enough to make the brentuximab effective or did you need a certain amount? And these things were, were largely uh, unknown at the uh, time that we initially started the Alcanza study. So what did we learn uh, during and after the study comparing brentuximab vidotin to methotrexate or bexerotene? Uh, so the primary endpoint of the study was something called ORR4, which was basically a combination of what percentage of people got better and did that improvement in their skin lymphomas uh, last long enough to be of benefit. So ORR4 means that your skin lymphoma improved by at least 50%, and that improvement lasted at least four months. And what we saw is that brentuximab vidotin, when compared to bexarotene or methotrexate, had higher rates of response. More people got better, and more people got better for four months, and then subsequent analyses uh, at six months and even 12 months, a higher percentage of people had improvement in their disease. So overall, there was uh, uh, much better activity against the lymphoma uh, with brentuximab vidotin than we saw with the, the other standard therapies of bexarotene or methotrexate. I think we also learned that one of the side effects of brentuximab, which is neuropathy, which can be injury to the nerves, uh, so this was known that this could occur, that this does occur in people with cutaneous T-cell lymphoma, and people often need to stop the brentuximab vidotin, sometimes between 9 and 12 months, that an accumulation of, of what's really mild nerve injury gets to the point where we need to hold the medication. Uh, so those were uh, important things that we learned about brentuximab, both in terms of the activity and in terms of potential accumulation of side effects. So what's next with brentuximab vidotin? Well, there's a, a lot of ways this could go. Because the response rates were so high, but many people did have to stop therapy, uh, usually within a year, uh, we know that for many of our patients with cutaneous T-cell lymphoma that, um, that they need ongoing treatment or, or, or treatments that can go on for multiple years uh, give better chance of disease control and better chance of keeping them well. So we and others have been looking at different dosing regimens, looking at lower doses of brentuximab to see if we can achieve those very high rates of response, uh, uh, as well as minimize any, any impact on the nerve. So minimize any nerve damage so people can really stay on, you know, hopefully for, for many years uh, to keep control of their lymphoma.